Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays where we are building a fully self-sufficient city. And the reason that this is back is because of the overwhelming support that all of you have shown for this build. And I'm excited to continue it. So a couple of things. Uh, first of all, if you if you like this build and you want me to keep continuing it, please remember to hit the like button. It lets me know that this is something you want to see. And you know, that is why this is back. That's the hunt. This was supposed to be a one-off. And uh, now there's a, it's gonna be a little mini series of sorts. So if you missed the last 30 seconds of the previous video, I did do a couple of things. I upgraded all of the roads to have uh, from the dirt roads to the, the paved roads. And uh, that that's really been nice. The other thing that uh, I did is I did reach a population of 10,000. And the reason why we're able to do that is if we look into our city statistics, we can see that the birth rate is higher than the death rate. So there were questions in the comments. Are we gonna have a death spiral? I don't, I don't think that we are, but we're gonna figure it out today and we're gonna figure out if we can have fully self-sufficient industries. So I do have a couple of hypotheses about this. And that is, I don't think that we can stop at just our industries. I think that we all also need to create our unique factories. So that's gonna be a little, um, a little something that we need to focus on. We're also gonna build up this downtown area a bit and we're gonna bring some transit in. But before we get into that, the very first thing I wanna do is, is start to build out some of these industry areas. So looking here, it's fairly flat and our resources are really well defined. I really love this map. What, what we're gonna do is, let's grab our industry road and I'm gonna extend out a farming industry right here and an ore industry right here. Now I'm choosing those for a very specific purpose and that is because there are factories that will, will work to, well together with those two industries. So let's get that done first. I do want these roads to be straight. So I'm going to just extend this out here. This will be approximately where this goes. And then we'll swap back over to this and have our collector here. Now we need to be very, very aware of our financial situation. This is going to be a very expensive proposition. And one of the things I'm thinking about upfront is that the upkeep of these industry roads, I believe is slightly less then yeah, so it's, it's slightly less to have these industry roads. Uh, this is 20, this is 25 cents a week per cell. This is 32. Let's upgrade these. Okay, so the reason why I want to do that is the primary benefit of the normal streets is that they're quieter and this is an industry area, so it doesn't matter. So with that being the you know, the, the case, there's no real advantage to using roads that aren't, uh, the, to using the normal road. So why not use the industry roads, save a little bit there in terms of cost, and uh, we'll just keep the city going well. Whoops, that is not straight. And I angled this road just to follow the landscape a little bit. This doesn't necessarily need to be angled, but might as well. And the very first thing that we're gonna to need to do is get this set up as an industry area. So I'm just gonna set this whole thing up. And truthfully, we know we're gonna have one over here as well. So I'm just going to paint this entire area as the ore industry. And we can shrink that down when it suits us. But for the time being, that's gonna be perfect. The other thing, I'm gonna upgrade this road here to be a collector so that we have some nice connections between these two industries because we are going to be using them. There we go. So now let's get this industry figured out. I think we're going to center it maybe along this area right here. So we'll pop in here. Farming industry. We need our main industry building to start out with. We'll place that uh, place it in the corner right here. And then why don't we just go for some small crop fields to start. So each of these has a production value of approximately 5,000 cells per week. So we're gonna need some storage and we're just gonna need to be aware of what we're doing because we don't wanna overproduce. So I built this, this is 200 cells. We're gonna go 200 more out. Actually, let's go 180. 
And I'll get rid of these. And then hopefully we can back these up a little too far. And these terraform, which is why I didn't uh, pay attention too much to the terrain, but they only terraform if you don't have the greenhouse. So we'll set this to wheat. Okay, and now we clearly need water pipes here. So we'll get those put in underneath our roads. Now we're not gonna need a huge industry, but I do want to reach level two. And the main reason for that is that level two unlocks the ability to place a couple of additional items that I think are gonna be very helpful for us. And once I get the power there, I'll, sh I'll show you those items. Okay, so the main items that I'm worried about are, we, we don't have the workers barracks right now. And when we look at our storage, we only have these grain silos, which they're fine. They're not great though. So I'm gonna place a whole bunch of them. So. For this, it's funny, we have this storage mode, I don't think it's going to matter because we can't export anything, so I'm just going to leave it. Uh, if we were to set this to empty, uh, you know, if you can't process it, you can't process it. So the other thing is, in this particular industry, this is one of the few where we don't have the ability to process anything until we, uh, I guess we could turn this into meat, maybe we'll do that a bit too. Uh, but we don't really have the ability to do anything else until we have reached level two. Now, I, I believe with the ore industry, we could leave it at level one if we want, because you get some processing, some processing ability, but even at that, I think it's, it's still better at a level two because you get the barracks. Okay, so there we go. We've got a nice little industry here. We are gonna need a place to put our animal products, and I believe that goes in a warehouse. So we will open up a small warehouse here just for the animal products. Maybe a couple, no, nope. oh wait, yeah, we have move it. I need to remember that. Just opens up so many possibilities for us. So even though there aren't really many mods in here, I am thrilled that we have move it. Okay, so I'll need to set these, and that's a good reminder that we did not set things correctly for all of our all of our warehouses in the previous one. So we're gonna need to fix that. So we've got this set up. Over here, that zoned ore, farming, ore. This should be forestry. And over here, oh, and look at that. That's how I changed it, I think. <laughs> Inadvertently, as I moved away from it, must not have, I must have uh, scrolled. So here, it's the same thing. So there we go. Now that's all set up. Very nice. So let's get a, a small ore industry set up as well. Let's take a look at our terrain. This is gonna be considerably more challenging to get this to look nice. We're just gonna do something pretty basic here and we'll set this up. I'm gonna look at the terrain. Right here is where we'll have our main industry building. Kind of a, a high point so you look up and you'd see that. When we get workers barracks, we can put those here as well. Let's see what we do there, that is 200. So let's go 200 over here as well. And let's get going with this. So there we go, main building ready to rock and roll. So I'm gonna, I don't know why I keep clicking on transit, but I do. <laughs> so here's the mines. These are very sensitive to terrain heights. And even though you know, we don't need to make this absolutely perfect, let's make it acceptable. Actually, I kind of like the idea of driving into this. So there we go, a wholly unnecessary detail, but <laughs> why not? And then we'll come over here, we'll add some extractor buildings off the side. There I go again, clicking the transit button. That's gonna be a, a thing, I guess. So I added some details. I don't even know that I like them all that much. <laughs> so I should stay focused on the things at hand. So let's go ahead and get water and power here. 
There we go. So that's water and power. Now each of these is again about 5,000 units per week. So we added eight of these. So we've got considerable production. Same thing here. Eight of these at about 5,000. This for animal is 2,500. So we're, we're, we have a little production chain going. And when we look at our egg area, we're short workers to get to the next level. And that is likely a reflection of our education pipeline. We are short on elementary schools, high school, plenty of university availability. We should also take a look at our death care, health care. We have six citizens. What's going on here? Lots of sickness right here, which to me is sound. Yeah. So let's back some of these out. They'll do better anyway, produce more electricity a little further away, and then we won't have so many sick citizens. So kind of a win all around. Look at that. We had that little thing disappear right off the bat. So really think that that is a good improvement here. Let's take a look. I really want to boost up our all of our, 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 our safety net here. We, we can see. Wow, look at that. We're already jumping up. We were around 7,000 to start. We're going to leave these alone and focus a little bit on the city. I really want to ensure that our healthcare system is top notch so we can get this lifespan from 75 years to something in the 80s. So first of all, we don't have a large hospital. We have we have one clinic. <laughs> so we're going to improve that. The way that we're going to do that, I'm going to add this right about here. This has excellent access to both collectors, which means you should be able to get anywhere in the community and get to this thing. I also got really lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that there's a hill up here. This could have been bad, but thankfully it wasn't. Pop this up 10, send this over. Nice connection there. Little, uh, those are, those are some tricky parking spaces. You can imagine how many people would drive down and slam into the hospital. But, you know, the, uh, the height of realism, not exactly respected here. We're okay. Now in this area, I want to give this some thought. We're going to work in some more unique buildings and I want to think about the vistas that we're going to look at. So I'm thinking, let's just extend some roads out. We'll do more with these in a little bit. But let's think about these main roads through here. And then we're going to prioritize our building placement along these. This is the end of our old grid. So we'll grab this one too. So this I'm going to preserve as some sort of park space. And let's see, let's start bending the roads to our will. So I want these to, to feel natural. Like these connections are, are really not that good. So let's just pop these back a little ways. So that we can at least come into this collector at a 90. There we go. That's much better. And I really like this view that we have right here. I think we're going to center the very first thing. Why don't we take Big Ben? and do something with that. So right here at this point is where I want to do something. So a little bit different than I normally build, but I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. So we'll go grab road length. Let's take this out 100, 100 here, back this out. And now I want to find Big Ben. Let's see where that is. Okay, and I kept that little cross there so I could perfectly center it. And I, oh, I should have actually left those there because I don't have anarchy on, so I can't add those back. So that's, ah, uh, bummer. I'm going to add these right back in so that we don't break things as we connect our roads up into this. And then at the end, I'm going to need to remember to take these roads out. What I'm trying to do here is create a corridor. So now we have a view. This road breaks up got lots of roads coming into it down here it's a little bit of a uh, of a jog but you'll still be able to see that and along this corridor we are going to have some of our higher density buildings some of our unique buildings and it looks like we missed some water pipes over here so we're going to take care of those as well and then we'll get these upgraded so that we have the ability to have a roundabout there we go looking good Looking real good. I'll get rid of those dirt roads a little bit later. 
for the time being, we're going to leave it because I want to place some more unique buildings. And I really love all of these Japanese uh, city pack buildings that we get. So I'm going to use those to, to build out a bit of a a bit of a skyline. So we're going to place some of these lower ones a bit closer. And then the higher buildings we're going to place back here. And I don't really mind that these loom over Big Ben a little bit. Because we're still going to get that view through this corridor. And that's really what I'm, I'm concerned about. So this is the main reason I'm even focusing on these at all. Is that I really want to ensure that we have really high land values. And I'm using all of the money. <laughs> so we're going to need to speed this up because that is going to be a concern of ours. So now let's get some of these roads built in through here. And I'm going to freestyle a little bit. So I'll turn angle on so my roads don't get totally wonky. I'll use road guidelines as well. And that'll help me at least line things up a bit. And I think I'm getting a little curvier than I'd like for a downtown area. It's starting to feel very suburban. So let's break some of these off and get those fixed. Okay, and I'm letting some of these bigger buildings dictate the roadway network. So that's not necessarily the height of realism. That's not how it works. <laughs> Generally, you have these buildings conforming to the roadway networks so that's how you end up with some unique building sizes and shapes uh, but we can't necessarily change the building itself and ensure that its design works best for the space that it's in so we were we'll just uh go on our own a little bit there we go so this is the general layout that we'll have through here i'm going to divide this and eh, no we'll leave that as a large park space there we go. So there's a grid. It's it's a little looser, a little freer, and uh, I think it's going to work out really nicely for us. Uh, and I like that we have a variety of sizes because what that's going to allow us to do is really ensure that when we're when we're filling in some unique buildings, they uh, have the ability to fit in a variety of places. That's one of the things. If you have a rigid grid in this game, you can find it really difficult to fit in some of the unique buildings. So this should help. So there we go. Now with this, we're gonna need to get some water pipes underneath our roads. And it's a bit of a, a spider web, but it, it, to me, this feels like a, a pretty natural organic layout if you were gonna do it. So, you know, there's been some deviations. We've got this one curve to, to make this connection. You could imagine that this road maybe would be important so let's go ahead and get some water pipes underneath the roads where they belong. And we're gonna do this right up front. It's not the height of realism, but there's a lot that we're doing right now that's not to be realistic, but to to, to really have an end. It's, it's a means to the end. And that blankets the area fairly well. So there's a, a significant residential demand and we're gonna fulfill some of that kind of rapidly and then we'll, we'll work on getting our, our healthcare facilities and some of the other facilities that we need as well. In fact, maybe we should do that right up front. So we've got one elementary school, one there, one there. We're gonna need one over here and we'll add one over here as well. Kind of back off in this area. Ooh, that is very hilly. Yeah, that's not gonna work. So we'll we'll move that over here. That's not the greatest location. This is kind of a commercial area. I don't ah uh, no. We're gonna we'll use some eminent domain and put it in a neighborhood. It's fine. We'll just the height of realism moving a school to uh to get to where we need to be. And that gets us on the edge. We're we're very borderline. Uh for our high school, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We've got one high school right here. We'll add another one down here. And while we're at that, if we have enough money for a library, we're gonna go for that as well. And that pretty much taps us out. 
<laughs> so we uh, we definitely need some more commercial buildings. So let's go ahead. This is this block got a little bit bigger than I was hoping, but we'll just forgive it. So these commercial buildings are going to be key because we need to be able to sell all of those office products that were or all of those farm products that we're we're putting together. So when we have commercial districts, that gives us the ability to sell things. Now, I part of me wants to, to zone some office. The problem is when we zone the office, what we're doing is uh, competing for workers with our uh, with our industry. So we need to be very well aware of what we're doing. We don't want to overdo it there. Same thing with commercial, but to a lesser extent. It's not a direct one for one compete. So there we go. And then we'll extend our density out this way, a residential density. And I want to also take a look. I mentioned the healthcare facilities. We have elder care right now. When we look at elder care, we're at 69%. We've got one facility. Let's add one more down here. And then for child health, we've got a lot of children. We've got, that's roughly a third of our, 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 our Sims, our children. Good health, but we can have great health. So we'll add a couple of these over here. We've got one over there. Let's add one over here as well. Once we have enough money for that. While we're waiting for that money, let's continue to zone. And I'm going to try to do so in a logical way. I am going to extend the residential. Interesting. We don't have water. <laughs> Missed a very small area. Same thing here. Hopefully that blankets us pretty well. Looks like we've got another spot right here. This is all underneath a road for the most part. So I think we'll be okay. But why don't we just ensure that we're okay. There we go. I'm going to enclose this with offices. The idea being to give some separation to those uses. And ensure that the noise doesn't become problematic for the residential uses. And then we'll tuck some of these back here. Okay, so I'm coming along this collector and I'm changing the zoning. I'm doing the exact same thing here. We don't want to get these residences too close to that industrial. We're probably going to move the industrial off the island and keep all of the residential on the island. But for the time being, this will do the trick. And yeah, we're starting to fill in. And look at that. Beautiful view of Big Ben. We can finally get rid of those roads down here. And things are starting to progress in this area. So our child health care is improving. Our, I think we actually dropped a year. <laughs> well, that's not ideal. Uh, for death care, we're almost at capacity. So let's get a cemetery downtown as well. And we'll add another one over here. We don't have the ability to create crematoriums yet. So it's important that we have some sort of capacity and it wouldn't be bad to look at the rest of our infrastructure as well i didn't build that child healthcare facility that i was meaning to so let's get that in place and that's in a residential area which to me is the best place for something like that and then let's look at everything else so our, our fire hazard is incredibly high so we'll place that right downtown there's really it, this is a local network there's no collector so very old school in that way so that will help us down here we have no police coverage either having this stuff is going to help us increase our land value and the amount that we're taking in a week we are running low on cash so this is going to be really important that we are considering this and ensuring that we are, we're meeting those needs and you can see even a police department is just very difficult <laughs> right now in fact i first of all We'll boost the amount that we're getting over here so we're even across the board. And then I'm going to take out a modest loan to pay for some of this just because I'm impatient, not because I think we really need it. In fact, we could cheese the game to, to get to where we need to be, but we're OK. So high school, we could probably use one more high school. And same thing with elementary schools. And this is going to be really important because we're not importing educated sims. So if we want a fairly robust education pipeline, that's on us. 
So same thing, we're gonna add one more high school. We'll use some eminent domain, maybe add it way over here. You know what? We'll borrow from Peter to pay Paul, take out a bigger loan, pay off our smaller loan with that, and have enough money to build our high school. Probably should be building facilities around here. It'll boost land values, and uh, we're not doing a lot in terms of parks, so maybe that would be for the best. You can see this is not ideal. <laughs> so why don't we add one? We'll come back to this, actually. I want to look back at our industries. I'm getting a little into the weeds there. We're still not where we need to be with workers. In terms of production, we're already there. Here, the exact same story. We're losing money at this industry. At this one, we are losing money as well. Now, I, don't, I didn't place any storage and our water pipes are not reaching, so let's get that fixed. And for the storage over here, we need these sand storage. And what we're gonna do is let's run this back over here because we are obviously made of money at this point we will spend money to level some ground <laughs> so that is what we are going to do we're going to level some ground place some sand storage over here maybe not the most eloquent and beautiful of solutions but this is a way to get this industry to be profitable There we go, offering a little bit of relief there. So there's a loop that could be made. We do need a power connection, easy enough. And now those are all set up. So this industry area now, we're still short on workers. I think the only way to get there is gonna be more extractors. Over here, it's the same story. We have grown our city by about 3,500 people. They're working their way through the pipeline, but it, it's not getting there quick enough. And you can see the city's basically stopped growing at this point. And that makes sense because every new building needs to be filled by uh, a, a person that's being born. And they need to grow up to, to, to be able to work and end up in that building. So lots of different considerations there. So the way that we can fudge that is to increase the number of extractors that we have. So that is precisely what we are gonna do. So let's go ahead, we'll extend this over. And this makes me regret putting all of these in place. In fact, let me just get rid of some of these. So I use the picker here to just select the rock area and I'm just deleting those. They're not helping at this point. They're causing more trouble than they're worth. So we'll just get rid of them. So we'll pop down through here. We're gonna add more extractors and clean this up a little bit too. Let's see if I can rotate this around. I didn't go far enough on this one. It's funny, they're about the same length as the farm buildings, but apparently, apparently I'm measuring something wrong. <laughs> Guess it's just not working. So 200, that should do the trick. We're gonna use move it to get that all fixed at the end. We'll do the exact same thing there. I'm not gonna get overly concerned about it. Let's keep this really utilitarian at this point. All right, big city. We've unlocked colleges and a crematorium, some other great amenities for transit and water. So good stuff there, all necessary stuff. So now let's get this cleaned up. I want to add some more extractors. The main reason for that is not because I think we need more to keep our industry running. It's just so that we have jobs. So we get this to level two. So now when we look at this, speed this up, we've got much more potential for workers and they're starting to fill in a little bit. Very, it's a struggle. It's a, it's a struggle. Over here, we are 41 workers away. So let's go ahead, we'll add some fruit fields in here. Then this road needs to be 360. So we'll add that in. At this point, I'm just trying to double it. So, so we have enough workers and quite a bit of overhead. So this, uh, and look at that, immediately got us to level two. So level two, what this does for us, when we look at our farm, is we now have a flour mill, cattle shed, and these barns. So these are the, the, the key part. So we're gonna add a whole bunch of barns. 
and with that a ton of traffic in fact i think it's so bad let's spread these out wow that is crazy i wonder what that's done to our track <laughs> that's funny well we can do something about this because we're gonna need to anyway because we want to add our flour mills so i'm just gonna add a road here and we will add flour mills along this. So we'll pop down here, two flour mills, and then we need some storage. And I think that we're gonna start to see our budget go through the roof in just a moment. Okay, so now we are going to, this processes the crops in the flour. So we want to store flour here in both of these. And the last thing that I want to build over here. Oh, interesting. We're no longer connected here. So we'll build this. We need to build some barracks, which will improve the efficiency of this entire operation. So the way that we're going to do that, we'll build a few roads that are a hundred long. And then we'll go ahead and add in our workers barracks here. And what that's going to do is improve the efficiency of our operations which is a huge benefit to us. And our power should be naturally connecting at this point, jumping. We are running a little low on power. Why don't we add some? Maybe along this bridge. This shouldn't harm anybody. There we go. And now we've got this, and you can see that we have a 35% bonus. We're producing animal products and flour. And now we have the ability to build some of our unique factories. So we've already got our bakery, or we can't build our bakery yet, rather. Because see, I don't think that we have built that yet, but this will create, out of our animal products, our crops, and our flour, we will get pastries, I, I assume, or maybe, you know, if you're, you know, uh, from, let me think, well, here, the UP, or parts of the UK, uh, pasties, I really like those. Maybe that's what this is. Okay, so now we can build our bakery. And I really love the look of this building. I like to put this in a downtown area, not right here. To me, the Go Nuts Donuts building seems like a, a downtown building, but we'll put it out here just out of the convenience of having it in this area. And then we will need a... We'll need the ability... We're making unique goods now, so we need storage for that. So let's go ahead and build a warehouse. There we go. So we've got a full supply chain here. So this will produce these. We're making money here. This is now making money. Over here, we're still short on workers, but we have a blueprint for how to crank this. So let's go ahead and get this thing moving too, because we want to be able to process these. We'll add just a couple more extractors here. And boy, that overlay makes it very difficult to see what's going on. We'll even extend this road out a little bit further. Now, even though I'm using move it here and there, that's really just out of convenience. And I think that anything that I'm doing here, if you're on a console, you should be able to do that as well. There, you don't, you don't need the ability to do what I'm doing with move it. That said, Move It's an excellent tool. If if you have one mod, that probably should be the mod that you add. The visual stuff is nice, everything else is nice, but Move It is just really essential. So there we go. Let's see how we're doing. Oh, we're so close. 132 out of 150 to get to level two. Let's add some policies. So the improved logistics will improve uh, increase the storage capacity of extractors and processing buildings and increase the upkeep. This improved safety supervision will make the jobs more attractive by making them less dangerous. We'll also lose less workers by death. Uh, and then we'll increase the production and output and uh, of, of all of our buildings with advanced automation. And then we look, we've got one extra employee from that. <laughs> Let's do the same thing over here. These policies are good. So we'll, we'll put them in place. You start to see that we're starting to make more money. We are filling in down here, but I think once we look at the end of this, we're going to see that 
The reason why things are improving is our factory supply chain. So we'll pop through here, a couple more extractors. We've got to get there eventually. And our, our storage, maybe that's part of it as well. We're completely filled up there. So let's go ahead and improve our storage capacity as well. Up, oh, and we have leveled up. We've leveled up. So let's get rid of this extra stuff. So now that we've leveled up, we have the ability to do a few things. So now we can take our ore and mine it into metal. We can make glass and we're going to do both of those things. So again, similar to the other it, with the farming, we're producing less. This is 3,200 units per week that you grind this into, but that's totally fine for our glass manufacturing plant. Pretty much the same thing. So let's go ahead. We'll extend out this road here and I'm going to add a connection here and then back here let's put some of these buildings so we'll have our ore grinding mills on this local road facing away we're gonna have a few of those and then we're gonna need a, a place to store this now the heights that's uh yeah we'll just we'll just forgive ourselves for what we've done there <laughs> so and then we'll pop up through here and add some water pipes. We're gonna need power as well. There we go. And now we need storage. So this is producing metals, so we will need to store the metals. And we will keep those outside across the street. A couple of those. And we'll set this to metals. And then on the other side, I do want to make glass as well. That is significantly larger though. So we'll swap the sides of this and let's see if we can do some loan things. I wonder. I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to. Let's just make some money quickly. So we'll just crank this up. And we'll watch this. As long as this isn't dropping, we're okay just to make some money. Okay, and it's going to allow me to keep doing this, but I think that we're totally fine. We'll take this down to 12, and now we can build out some of our buildings. It's always kind of a, a weird uh, phenomenon in this game. You're, you're using government money to fund private industry infrastructure. <laughs> it's kind of a weird, a weird look, but it, it is what it is. So here we will go ahead and we will store our glass in both of these. And I just want to give enough overhead for all of these. I am going to fix this road. And this is why you should always pre grade, especially for these large industry buildings. It's just very difficult to get this right. Otherwise, okay. So it's a very uh, challenging look for this industry area. So we should, the last thing we should add is a couple of the barracks buildings just to improve our efficiency here. Grand City. All right, solar power plant. That's going to come in very handy. We've got some more garbage facilities. Bus Metro Hub. Okay, <laughs> maybe. All right, so let's go ahead and get this into place. And what this will do is, again, we've increased our, uh, our efficiency. Very good. That's going to be very helpful. So we could have also uh, built some transit out here. I'm going to do that soon. Not quite today, though. I think that we are uh, getting into a better spot, but we're not quite where we need to be. So now we've pr we're producing these things. So if we look over here, we have water pipes. Yep. So we're making glass. We're making our metals. We're filling this up. What else can we build in terms of factories? We'll come back over here so we can produce an industrial steel plant. And that's about it. And I think that the other ones, we need to reach a higher level here in our industry areas. So that said, let's look at our terrain heights, some challenging areas to build these factories. This might actually be the best spot in terms of our terrain heights. It'll work just fine. We just need some additional connectivity through here. So let's 
build out a bit of a roadway network through here. There we go. So now there's at least some connectivity through here. We'll even extend this out. This dirt road can go a ways. We'll even make it a better road than that. There we go. So now we'll get some speed through there. And when we take a look at this now, we should see a complete supply chain. We're creating steel products, unique factory goods. This one is not full, so this should be fine. We could add a second one. Why don't we? So now these would go over here and you see that there's some production value here, production value over here at our bakery, which to me means that we're making money and you look, our weekly income is going up. We're in a good place. Our workers are our biggest limitation. We are about to hit level three for our agriculture area. Over here, it's again a worker issue, but we're about to hit level three. And with that, we will unlock some more of our unique factories. So uh, let me see which ones unlock. We'll get the lemonade factory, which I think we'll be able to use. Yep, glasses, glass and uh, crops. We'll get an electronics factory, which we don't have plastics. So we'll need to, we'll need to actually have all of our industries if we want to be able to make this work. And interestingly, I'm, I'm, I'm having the day night cycle come back, which is a little frustrating, but it's fine. So let's look back in here one more time. You can see that this industry as a whole is doing fine. I just don't know that we can do a lot with this raw output. So there's a part of me that would just love to turn off these extractors. But the moment I do that, we lose workers. They don't just distribute to the other facilities that are more valuable to us. So, you know, even this, like I'd love to, if I crank up our production rate, it's not that we're going to make more money or there's going to be more employees. It's just going to cost more because we still, we're still struggling a bit. Let's see. Yeah, that, that hurt our income. So this might be something that we need to play with to try to find the perfect balance. And interestingly, you see, I lower this and the amount that we're taking in goes up. So what that means to me is that we're, if we go too far, we're going to fill up these buildings. And interestingly, we're not. I thought that we would fill these up and that would cause issues. But we'll keep it right in the middle. We've managed to increase our budget, improve our budget, fill in this downtown area. Let's take a look at our budget panel. That's something I haven't really done much today. And what you see is that our income from our factory area is about but bounce between 15 and 16,000 per week. It is by far our second highest. As I say that, it's not. Uh, and then we look at our, our expenses over here, about equal. Let's pop in here and we're making some money. We're not, it's not going gangbusters like we would expect uh, if we had a normal industry, but it's not sinking our city. It's working. And for the most part, it seems to be improving our coffers. This is what the industry's DLC does. I guess it's not quite as reliant on exports as I would have anticipated, which is really interesting. So it certainly grows slower, which is fine. But our city is growing slower, but it's still growing. This isn't by any means a small city. I've spent a couple hours, I think about two, two and a half hours on this city now. And what you can see is that it's growing. It's, it's doing fine. Look at this. Level three, and let's see if we have anything else that we can build in terms of factories. Yeah, we can build a lemonade factory. We're gonna do that. And that is where we'll probably end up leaving this. Let's take a look at this though. We'll add that right there. We're gonna make this work in this area. Not the ideal area, but truthfully, these types of buildings, even in real life, don't end up in their ideal areas. They get, they end up where they fit, so. To find a parcel this large can be a real challenge. And there we go. So we've got this. This will produce those unique goods again. And these aren't filling up. So I'm going to just steal one of these and move it over here. Whoa, that looks horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. Why don't we just place it? A nope, that looks bad too. This is why you need to respect your topography. You don't do it, 
and this is what you end up with. So this should actually probably back out over here a little bit. There we go. Nice looped water system. And this thing is now working. We're making lemonade. We've got our crops and our glass over here. This one is eight away. So I do, let, let's see if we can get there and see what else we'll unlock. Cause this is again, something else that can be sold in our commercial areas. So it's very, very valuable. All right, a little bit of patience and we got there. And we now have a three star ore area. So what this has unlocked for us is the electronics factory. We do not have plastics. That is a shame. It's the only thing we unlocked. So at some point we're gonna need to create an oil industry area as well. I don't know if it's gonna do much. Whoa, whoa, did you see that? This building just built over here, Bob's plastic bags and Bob's plastic bags. I <laughs> pump the oil, make bags. And uh, that, uh, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> We do now have lemonade that we can put in our plastic bags at the grocery store. So it's it's a thing. With that, though, I think that we have proven that it is possible to create a totally self-sufficient industry area that doesn't tank your city, that makes money, that is good for your city. And interestingly, still no traffic problems. 93%, even though we have a number of pinch points, and I didn't even really do any traffic management at all today, which is terrible. <laughs> you see that we've got junctions up the wazoo. We, uh, we're still doing okay. I should, I should pop through here though and we'll take care of some of this. I'm gonna leave this one here. This one's kind of functioning as a collector, so that's fine. No, we're not gonna leave it there. We, we're gonna follow our rules. There we go. And then over here, we've got the exact same thing where we have built the downtown area, added lots of signals, making it difficult to get to our oil derrick. <laughs> and Bob's bags. And for our traffic flow, that has got us up to 95 again. So I am very pleased about that. Things are looking good. We will build some transit in the next one if this is something you want me to continue. You guys are dictating whether this series continues or not. If you like it, please hit the like button. If uh, we get enough support behind this series, I'll continue it. Uh, and I hope that uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll have a brief city tour. Take care. Bye-bye.